God of every nation and people, from the very beginning of creation, you have made manifest your love. When our need for a Savior was great, you sent your Son to be born of the Virgin Mary, and to our lives he brings joy and peace, justice, mercy, and love. Bless this crib which we have prepared in honor of the birth of your son, born in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. Your love came into our human world for all time to bring all people to you. Bless all who visit this manger. May we be reminded of the humble birth of Jesus and raise our thoughts to him, we Savior of us all. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to our celebration this evening as we begin to celebrate the birth of Jesus once more into our hearts, into our homes, into our world. Let's now call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for mercy and for pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. On those who dwell in a land of deep shadow, a light has shone. You have made their gladness greater. You have made their joy increase. They rejoice in your presence as men rejoice at harvest time as men are happy when they are dividing the spoils. For the yoke that is weighing on him, the bar across his shoulders, the rod of his oppressor, these you will break as on the day of Midian. For all the footgear of battle, every cloak rolled in blood is burned and consumed by the fire. For there is a child born for us, a son given to us, and dominion is laid upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonder Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Wide is his dominion in a peace that has no end, for the throne of David and for his royal power which he establishes and secures in justice and integrity from this time onwards and forever. The jealous love of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. God's grace has been revealed and it has made salvation possible for the whole human race and taught us that what we have to do is to give up everything that does not lead to God and all our worldly ambitions. We must be self-restrained and live good and religious lives here in this present world while we are waiting in hope for the blessing which will come with the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Christ Jesus. He sacrificed himself for us in order to set us free from all wickedness and to purify a people so that it could be his very own and would have no ambition except to be good. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Caesar Augustus. Caesar Augustus issued a decree for a census of the whole world to be taken. And this census, the first, took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to be registered. So Joseph set out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee and traveled up to Judea to the town of David called Bethlehem, since he was of David's house and line, in order to be registered together with Mary his betrothed, who was with child. And whilst they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them at the inn. In the countryside close by, there were shepherds who lived in the fields and took it in turns to watch their flocks during the night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them. They were terrified, but the angel said, Do not be afraid. Listen, I bring you great news of great joy, a joy to be shared by the whole people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And here is a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly with the angel, there was a great throng of the heavenly hosts, praising God and singing 
glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace to men who enjoy his favour. Gospel of the Lord. There seems to have been an awful lot of preparation gone into Christmas this year. I don't know whether it's because, you know, because of the the disappointment of last year, but an awful lot of effort seems to have gone into it, at least if you listen to the media anyway. We've been warned since the summer that if we didn't, didn't get stocked off early, that it would be far, far too late. And it's either the lack of lorry drivers, not enough agricultural workers, or Brexit, or a combination of all three. So if you hadn't bought things by the beginning of November, then it was going to be too late, so you might as well not start. But hang on, of course, there was also, there was Black Friday, wasn't there, and Cyber Monday, and now we've got the post-Christmas sales, which began long before Christmas has actually dawned upon us. And the lights, as you drive along, as you walk along the streets, um, they seem to have been there since the clocks went back at the end of October, the beginning of November. Lots and lots of lights, lots of work to put them up and lots of work to take them down again. But they do bring real cheer, don't they, to the dark nights. And I don't mean just the, the physical dark nights, but also the emotional ones and the mental health ones and the COVID ones too. So here you are. Here's a question for you all now. How many of you actually believe in Father Christmas? Let's see a show of hands. <laughs> I thought maybe the little ones, if there were any little ones here, they might have put their hands up. Um, but at least one, one person believes in Father Christmas. Thank God for that. Um, isn't it strange, though, that even when our belief in things like Father Christmas disappears, um, we still keep the rituals that surround belief in Father Christmas. And certainly we do it for children, there's no doubt about that. We want to keep that going for the young ones and the little ones. But we continue the tradition of giving presents and gifts to one another. The belief might have gone but the ritual still remains. And I suspect that's why a lot of people come to church at Christmas who might not be so gospel greedy during the rest of the year. And don't worry, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands again, so don't worry about it. I'm not, many of us keep all the Christmas rituals and customs even when we have stopped truly believing in them. For example, school nativity plays are a definite must if COVID allows us to attend them, or at least we can see them by Zoom. And angels announcing peace to all people on earth, even if it's the angel at the top of the Christmas tree. And cribs, even if it contains all sorts of crazy animals and toys. Yes, we keep the rituals even when faith is in short supply. So what's it all about? Well, the truth behind the rituals is actually almost unbelievable, and perhaps that's where the problem starts. It's very hard for us to accept and believe what what Christmas is truly about, what it actually means. Since the dawn of time, human beings have been trying to figure out why we're here, What are we for? Where are we going? What's our origin and what's our final destiny? And the Christmas story 
the account of the Incarnation, tries to answer this once and for all. God chose a people and began to reveal himself to them through, the natural, through natural events, through the ups and downs of their lives, through the prophets and dreamers, through holy people and sinners. And when he judged the time right, this creator, God and Father, entered into his own creation by sending his Son in flesh, the very image of himself. The divine Son took on human nature and all that comes with it apart from the sinful and the destructive elements. He came to share our life, our world, our experiences. And again, we have to ask, why? And this is a really incredible thing. And even people who have strong faith and are very religious find it hard to accept. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost but may have eternal life. That's the hard bit. That without deserving it, without earning it, without having the right to it, God loves us. Not in general, not just as a race, but as individuals. Each and every one of us is so loved by God that he gives his only son for us so that we might not be lost, but may have eternal life. At times, we can be so blind and stupid, so hard-hearted and incredulous, so selfish and sinful, so arrogant and yet damaged, that we can't accept this free gift of God's love that comes to us in the birth of this little child who is God's son, Emmanuel, God living with us now and always. And all this is true when we're living in the full light, but it's also true in the darkness, in the glory and in the humiliation, in the joy and in the pain of our lives. In Jesus, the Son of God become man, God is living with us, loving us, cherishing us, for no other reason than that's the way God is. That's God's nature. God is love. You see, it's not so complicated. And maybe that's the reason that so many of us find it hard to accept and believe. We still want to earn, to deserve, to have it by right. But it's sheer gift. It's nothing but grace. Indeed, from his fullness, we have all of us received, yes, grace in return for grace. Since though the law was given through Moses, grace and truth come from Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is the only Son who is nearest the Father's heart who has made him known. So tonight, I pray for each one of us. Let's keep at least that ritual of being ready to accept the gift that God our Father is offering us this Christmas the gift of his only Son made flesh, Jesus Emmanuel, God who is living with us now and every day. And all the joy and peace of this beautiful season be to you and all your families and friends and loved ones. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.
and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, <coughs> who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we rejoice in the birth of Christ, let us bring our needs before our loving God. <coughs> For the church throughout the world, that on this joyful <coughs> feast, we may be shining examples of God's love for all of his people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <coughs> for the world's rulers, that Christ, the Prince of Peace, may direct their minds and hearts to work for justice and peace on earth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those whose lives are troubled, that by his coming among us, Christ may give faith to those in doubt, courage to those in fear, and hope to those in despair. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For Christians who are suffering for their faith and will be forcibly prevented from coming together this Christmas, that they will find the courage and strength that they need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those we know who are sick, that they will know God's healing, and for those who have died, that they will be granted eternal rest and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As we celebrate the birth of Jesus with Mary, his mother, we ask for her prayers as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us now bring our personal prayers to God, our loving Father. God, our Father, Fill each one of us with your joy and gladness at this Christmas time as we make our prayer to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Saviour for this world, and in communion with those whose mem memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and encountered among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, 
make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be brought to the altar, be borne to the altar by the hands, sorry, be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. And to us also your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, 
we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ be eternal light to us who receive it. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb, Lord. And though, for those who are joining us from home, we say our spiritual communion prayer together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity may through an honourable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down your heads for God's blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined this holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his Son's saving birth be announced by shepherds, be announced to shepherds to, by angels, fill your mind with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Oh. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and the heavenly realm, fill you with the gifts of his peace and favour and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.